Hello coders, this is Jared from Renaissance Coders, and today we're going to talk about operators in JavaScript. Okay, so the first thing that we need to answer is what exactly is an operator? Well, the answer largely depends on the type of operator that we are talking about. Oh yeah, there are a lot of different operators, including arithmetic operators, assignment operators, bitwise operators, the comma operator, comparison operators, the ternary operator, the grouping operator, logical operators, and several miscellaneous operators. Okay, so there are a lot of operators, and we are going to touch on all of them eventually. But in this tutorial, we are only going to focus on the arithmetic operators. The arithmetic operators will take in numerical values, run some arithmetic on them, and return with a single value. So at the most basic definition, these complete mathematical operations. Some of the operators can do more than that, but let's keep it fairly simple for this definition. There are several operators in this category that are essential to JavaScript development, including the addition operator, the subtraction operator, the multiplication operator, the division operator, the modulus or remainder operator, the increment operator, the decrement operator, and the unary operators. Okay, I promise, no more lists. Let's get started. The addition operator takes in two or more values and returns the sum of those values. As an example, if we type in 2 plus 2, then we are returned a value of 4. This also works on variables. If we have var a is equal to 2 and var b is equal to 2, then we can create a var sum and set it equal to a plus b. Our sum variable will now be equal to 4. The arithmetic operator works on more than just numbers though. We can also use it on strings, booleans, number string combinations, and string boolean combinations. Let's go through a few examples really quickly. If we add together true and 4, then we are returned a value of 5 because we know that true is equal to 1. If we add together false and 4, then we are returned a value of 4 because we know that false is equal to 0. When we add a string and a number together, this is called concatenation. For example, if we do 7 plus the string of 7, we are returned a value of 77 as a string because the number is coerced into a string for concatenation. When we add a string and a boolean together, this is again concatenation and the boolean will be converted to a string. For example, if we add together the boolean value of true and a string of true, a value of true true will be returned as a string. Finally, we can concatenate strings together like Jared plus Hill will return a value of Jared Hill. An important note when concatenating strings together is to always add a space if one is needed and that the first value will always be returned first. So as an example, if we add Hill comma space plus space Jared, then we are returned Hill comma space Jared. Okay, that is going to cover a good bit of information on the addition operator. So let's take a look at the subtraction operator. The subtraction operator takes two numerical values and returns their difference. For example, 4 minus 2 returns 2. This operator is not as robust as the addition operator because we cannot use this operator on strings. We can, however, still use this on booleans and numbers. For example, false minus 2 returns negative 2. Okay, now let's move on to the division operator. The division operator takes the first value and divides it by the second value, returning the quotient. The cool thing with this operator has to do with types. If you watched our earlier video on JavaScript's data types, then you already know that JavaScript considers both integer values and floating point values as numbers. So we can divide two integer values and be returned a float value. For example, if we do 7 divided by 4, then we are returned a value of 1.75. We can also end up with positive and negative infinity values if we divide by 0 or negative 0. For example, 10 divided by 0 is infinity, and 10 divided by negative 0 is negative infinity. Now on to the multiplication operator. The multiplication operator returns the product of the input values. For example, if we multiply 2 times 8, then we are returned a value of 16. We can also chain together values, like 2 times 8 times 1. This will also return a value of 16. 
but 2 times 8 times 1 times 2 will return a value of 32. The remainder or modulus operator returns the integer remainder of dividing the first input by the second input. For example, if we do 2 modulus 2, we expect the result to be 0, right? Well, it is. But if we do 5 modulus 6, we get a value of 5 returned. Okay, let's move on to the increment operator. This operator can be arranged two ways that are called postfix and prefix. The postfix version is placing the plus plus operator after the number or variable that you are altering. Let's take a quick look at an example. As an example, let's create a variable c and set it equal to 7. Next we are going to create another variable d and set it equal to c++. Now what do you think the results of this operation will be? The value of d will be equal to 7, but the value of c has changed to 8. So you definitely have to make sure that you are modifying the correct variable when using this operator. The prefix version of this operator will return a more expected result. For example, if we change our original statement to prefix the operator, then d will be equal to 8 and c will also be equal to 8. The decrement operator also has postfix and prefix versions that act just like the increment operator's versions do. For example, let's create some new variables. Let's create the variable e and set it equal to 10. And now let's create the variable f and set it to e minus minus. The result of this will be f is equal to 10 and e is equal to 9. These are the same results that we saw with the increment operator. The prefix version of the decrement operator works the same way as the increment prefix operator. So if we change our code to reflect a prefix, then both E and F will equal 9. Okay, now let's talk about the unary negation operator. This operator has to come before the value that you are adjusting, and it negates the value that you are adjusting. So, for example, if you create another variable g and set it equal to 5, and then create the variable h and set it in equal to negative g, then g will remain 5, but h is now equal to negative 5. Okay, we have made it to the final operator in this set, the unary plus operator. And this is another operator that may not do what you expect to based on its name. Essentially, this operator is used to turn a value into a number. It works on numbers, strings that contain numbers, booleans, and null. So what do you think will happen if we write var a is equal to 10 and var b is equal to plus a? If you said that the values for both a and b are equal to 10, then you are absolutely right. Now, what happens if we set a equal to a string of 10 and b equal to plus a. If you said that the value of b is now equal to the number 10, but the value in a remains the string of 10, then you are absolutely right again, and you're pretty good at this stuff. Okay, here's another example. What if we write in plus null? What value would be returned? Zero is the correct answer, but the question is why, right? In one of our earlier videos, I said that null is not equal to zero, and that is still true. But because we are converting the value from a type of null to a number type, then null is represented by zero numerically. Okay, one final example. What happens when we do something like plus the string of stuff? Well, this one returns a value of NAN, or not a number, because the string could not be converted numerically. An important note on the unary plus operator is that this, this operator is considered to be the easiest way to change a value's type to a number because there are no other operations taking place. Essentially all we're doing is saying okay we want this string of 7 to now become the number 7. Alright everybody that is going to do it for this tutorial. I hope that you learned something new about the arithmetic operators in JavaScript. In our upcoming videos we're going to learn about assignment operators comparison operators, logical operators, 
and the ternary operator. Be sure to subscribe for more great development tutorials, and as always, thanks for watching. This has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial.